great. Good. So, are we ready just to do the mass position? We go to the back. Where's that emergency? That's in the other boat. Can I put a magic marker on, please? This is the blue tiller extension. You're going to have to do the controls for me. not a diagonal measurement. If the centre line of the mast, this mast must be quite a well forward, I always have when I'm reaching, I have my mast just after that. So let the foot the thing go forward. What I want, I said, whoop, stop. What I want is when I'm reaching is I want the mass to leave the deck at right angles because that must be the highest up that it can be. I think. That's the way I've worked out over the years. And I use that as my datum for looking to see how much the mast is bending. Right, so go back to where you were, please. Right. Where's the main handle? This is the traditional way of checking everything. The, the trouble is that the albacore, uh, you ran the, the, the mass, the mass um, foot position could vary about two inches. Not exactly what the position is. But it's a colossal amount. I have tried it, I'm afraid it's in the old fashioned. I have tried it at 10 foot 11 because with Flippy we were sailing light, light at the front, not at the back, and um, we were really slow, we didn't do that. So I've always stuck to having the front of the mast measured from the transom at 10 foot 10. Right. Now here you can see one of the weaknesses of just of swinging the tape back. What's that measurement of the, I was going to say the black band, at the band? It's got to be 18 foot 6. Sorry, it's in three inches. Can you see, I hope, that it's at 18 foot seven and a half? Yeah. Yeah. What will that do to the measurement at the back? So make it to break, yeah. So what you have to do is you put the top of the tape measure where the top of the sail will be. So that measurement has got to be reduced to 18 foot seven. Okay, and then that means... Are these measurements in your... Handy guide you've yes. given us. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But over the years, I've used those less and less and used the boom height as mine. Oh, my. 23 foot 5. Right, we'll do some work on this in a minute. The traditional way then is for this to be measured down to this point here and usually, I need to remind myself what it is, between about 23 feet-ish, so we're going to have to increase the rake on this. Right, so which, which point? Down here. Just right in that angle. Yeah. Can you see this? Can you see it down here? I'll bring the mask back a bit, Michael. Yeah. A bit more. A bit more. The trouble is you can't do this while you're going along, can you? <laughs> I, I suspect it'd be quite slow. So <laughs> it, it's much better, I think, to use the, you know, how, what does the boat tell me? Am I underpowered? Boom up in the air. Am I overpowered? Boom down. Just, it's as straightforward as that. Okay, that's the sort of area. Yep. Now, just double check that. 
when you set that, are you putting no shroud tension at all? Oh, no, 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 sorry, well done. It's got to be rig tension. Well done, thank you. <laughs> Wait. I, you always see at the end of a race, don't you, somebody who hasn't had a good race, they do this, yeah. but what was their tacking like, what were their winches like, you know? Were they sitting too far back? Were they allowing the boat to heel over? Those are far more important than wh whether this is 20 foot, 3 foot 3, 23 foot 1, 23, 1 and a quarter. You know. I'm a great believer, if it's, a, if it's about right, it's about right. Now where's the front of the mast in relation to our mast? Oh. Right, can you check the mark on the front of the mast? So front of the mast is it's pretty much on it, isn't it? I hope it's half a centimetre in so front. That mark, which we can use to make sure the boat is sorry, the mast is at right angles on a reach, can also be used when we beat it. Yes? Right, and that is that your light wind you said? Yeah. This would yeah, well we'll, we'll see when we put the boom up. But this is there. this is the sort of thing. Yeah, let's give up. That so tape measure down a little bit, Andy. Right, what's the reason why you don't have it all the way vertical up with it as well as reaching? We're going to deal with that. Yeah. <laughs> Stop asking these good questions. <laughs> Just trying to suss out what I'm doing wrong. Apart from eating too much. You're just waiting for a good There's no hurry, Andy. <laughs> it's alright. It's been waiting for years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Now, big tension. That's under, isn't it, at the moment? Probably. Yeah. Are you, are you okay. accommodating your first demand? Yeah, yeah, okay. Right. Okay, leave it to that. Can you take a note of what that is, somebody? Yep. 21. 21 ish. Right, we're not going to alter anything, but in a minute, when we put the main slot, you've got to bend the bar. And you're going to have to be very brave because of what it does to this. It's a real horror story. Right, okay. So let's bear away as soup's on more. so bothered about the microscopic positioning of the of the sheet in it forwards and backwards it's much more important on the inward and out movement provided that when you were to extend the sheet the, the, the line of the sheet if you were to extend that upwards it is never ever above halfway as a general rule in the albacore 150 mil to you know six to nine inches below is fine because what has much much more relevance much more relevance is this look at the leech of the jib look at his position relative to the spreaders I'm going to move it just an inch 25 mil a lot yes 
But do we all agree it's a lot? Yeah. Yeah. The ratio is five to one. Now that's pretty horrible, isn't it? That's horrific. That dead easy to do that. In the old days, that's what we used to do when I used to crew albacores. Right, now what are we going to talk about? You know, no, no. This has got to be on the move, especially somewhere like here. Provided that that angle is just below halfway, we're now going to get much more control with nuances of leech tension. Yes? Tiny amounts. Every time the crew moves, whatever they move that, the leech just below the spreaders will move five times. That jib now would be so slow in light winds, wouldn't it? I mean, that would be a definite banana up the hose, you know, the, wouldn't it, the exhaust pipe? Yeah. So how do we know whether we've got this right? We're talking about the in and out now, and we use the telltales to, to, to tell us this. Might be better if you sort of, yep. Yeah. We need to stay there, you're in a perfect position. Oh, sorry. What we're doing is looking at this here. <laughs> you can all, I mean, I should. Yeah. Can you make sure you see? Right. Look what happens when I oversheet. Look what happens to the relationship of the entry at the front compared to the entry at the top. Put it in really tight. Right, now ease it about an inch. I hope it moved more at the top. Yes? We're doing, well, let's ease it a bit more to make that really obvious then. Yes, and it's backwinding now. Yeah. As you ease the sheet, you will lose control of the back edge of the sail furthest away from the control point, i.e. at the top. So under sheeting the jib, as we've just seen, collapses the top of the jib. Over sheeting, which is horrible in an albacore, will cause a problem here. So the rule is, if you have the correct amount of tension, all three wind tufts will work at the same time. Because those wind tufts are aping the airflow over the sail, aren't they? Yes? So if they all curl and they all fly at the same angle, it must be a constant angle of attack. Yeah? If the top telltale circle first, Circles meaning the airflow is broken down before the bottom telltale circles. That means the leech is too loose. And what have we got to do? Squeak it gently and put on the end, squeeze it slightly. By the same token, if the bottom telltale circles on the windward side before the bottom, but before the top one, what have we got to do? Ease it out. How much? Just enough to bring them all into line. If you've got it right, and because of the, of the change of our environment, but it's all changing, it'll only be for a second or two. If you've got it right, all three windows will be angled up at about 45 degrees. Why 45 degrees? Well, people say, oh, no, 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 I have the horizontal. Rubbish. If you have them horizontal, the windward telltale's horizontal, you are five degrees with all the horrors of setting that extra distance. All the horrors of all that sitting out nonsense. Yeah. I try and get them to be angled out. As soon as the boat's at walking pace, it, they will do it because it's such a beautiful boat for doing it. Why do they angle up? There's that amount of hull pushing through the air. What's it doing to the air? Well, it, it, it's moving it to here and so on, all the way up. So there is a diagonal movement up over the sail plan of the air being forced because of simply because of the boat forcing itself through the air. Yes? And the telltales are aping that movement. So here's the rule. Top telltale first, pull it in. How much? Just enough to bring it back into line with the eyes. Bottom telltale first, ease it out. How much? Just enough to bring it into line with the eyes. This will mean that the dear old helm, because of the Ian's genius of doing this, the dear old helm here will be able to present the boat to the wind, knowing that the angle of attack is going to be constant because the leech is being moved according to what the telltales are doing. The 
bigger the jib on your wayfarers and things, even more important. Even more important. What are you doing on this boat? Because this is... Yeah, good. The poor old telltales on the Lured side don't have the, you know, the benefit of all this air. So the poor old telltales on the Lured side will be horizontal, while the telltales are trying to... Andy, I'm going to borrow you, please. Can you angle them up at 45 degrees? Not all of them. <laughs> That's where you've been going wrong. <laughs> this is what we're aiming for. Yes. On the wrong end of the boat. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it was it was in front of the thwart. <laughs> the bigger the distance between them, the higher up you will get in your fireball days, they'd be parallel to the left, wouldn't they? Yeah. The bigger, further apart you get them. Without them stalling, the closer to the wind you're pointing. Yeah? Right. Albacores these days have got adjustable thingy bobs here so that you can adjust the tension. The wire, the one by two millimeter, one by 19, will stretch about five mil when there's 350 pounds of load on, imposed on the on the halyard. So you can't have oh stop stop stop. That was a header. You can't have a constant thing here. As I'm going down to the water, the last thing I do is just to look at this. And the rule I use don't let it go too much. Wind's moving back to the right. These under that cloud look. Can you see the wrinkles here? Yeah. The rule I use, and listen. Can you hear? Yeah. What I want, if it's right, over a metre, this point here will move five mil. If it moves more than five mil, the flow will be too far back. If there's no movement at all, you're tensioning the luff like mad. By over tensioning the luff, what are you doing to the leech? By moving the flow forward, by over tensioning the cloth, what are you doing to the back edge of the sail? You're making it fall away. So therefore you're having to oversheet it to bring it into line. So the last as we go down the slipway, I just do that. Just to check that there's five millimeters of movement. Now there's one last guy um, thing we've got to look at is the leech telltale. Because the back edge is attached to the front, you know, once the air has gone from the front to the back, it will go if we've got it right, if we've got it right, the air will jet proportion off the back edge and that leech telltale will tell us that it that that's working. If it's streaming, it's working. If it goes to one side or the other, then that means the airflow's broken down. It will very rarely go to the windward side. In fact, I can't think of an example where it could go to it. But it could well do. Shoot it in the right hand, please. There you go. If it does that, if it goes to the leeward side, that means we've created a partial vacuum because the air has broken down. So there's no movement on the leeward side. Yep. What we've done is we've reefed the gym, we've reduced the sail area. When is this likely to be? In lighter winds. Yeah. Less sail area in lighter winds, that doesn't make sense really. Yeah. So the crew has to not only do the telltales, but they've also got to make sure that is streaming. And the rule is, if it's streaming, absolutely fine. If it goes around the third side, you have to ease the leech to let this sail open out a little bit. Yes? It's a really good guide. In the old days we didn't have them. It's a really good guide. Yes? Any questions on the gym? When you talk about um, oversheeting, are you talking just about the jib car positions or actually pointing no. out too far no. as well? On my boat, the jib car position... Oh, shall we do that? That's a good... Thank you. Yeah. 
people say that in a breeze, are you ready for this? Thank you. In a breeze, they move the jib fairly back. There's a root foot word for it rhyming with hawks. Because what are we doing in a breeze to the mast rake? What you're going to do... Right. Yeah, so we're going to make it off, yes? Yeah. Look, leave the clue, that where it is. Sorry, I've got that. Right. No, 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 no. Don't jump the gun. <laughs> I'm just hacking. Right. Look what happens to the back corner when we increase the rate. Increase the rate, Jim Perry's got to go off. It's a gym. And what's happening to the leech, folks? So what's happening to the clue? What's happening? It's going down. It's going down. So with more rake, you don't need. You don't, you don't need. You don't need to move the fairly back. Right. Back to where we were, please. Sometimes you'll find, as you're beating to windward, that some rotten tow rag, maybe several foot rotten tow rag, are out pointing you. So you have to decide whether it's because the sheeting is wrong or whether the rig tension is wrong. Right? If you luff up to where the others are pointing, if you luff up to where the others are pointing, please a jibber. I mean, what happens is you, you try and point where the others are, but because the, the sails stop you know, and are inefficient, you go slower than them. So what do you do? You bear away a snippet until you're going the same speed as them, but you're, you're sailing you know, further to lure. Yeah. So you've got to check whether it's because, as I say, the leech is too loose or whether the rig change is wrong. All you do is luff up. Right. As you luff up, if the sail backwinds throughout its height, then it's a rig tension problem. Yes. If it backwinds at the top first, that means it's a leech problem. So, let, are you ready, guys? I'm just going to go to windward. Right, so that was pretty good. Easy. So that was right. Okay. Sorry. J the jib sheet. Get the rig tension. The sail like fins with the top of the mast way to leeward, and you could almost tie a knot in the rule track. The rule now, the, the, the rule I use now, is if the leeward shroud is visibly slack, if it's moving, you will have jib left sag. Yes, in fact, if I just, are we alright? But what happens when we slacken off the front of the jib to the upper? When is that likely to happen? When are we going to get more jib left side? In a breeze. In a breeze, that will stop us pointing. I mean, that's a jib. It's cheery, me. Yeah. So, what I do as the breather, I, I look at the lure shroud for my big tension, rather than this all this other stuff, I look at the lure shroud. Is it visibly slack? Then I tighten up the shrouds and the jib. If it's not moving a smidge, in really light winds, send the crew down to Lourdes and just get them to wobble. If it moves an inch each side, then that's about right. Yeah. If, 
if they can't move it at all, this time the front of the jib will be too straight. Isn't it interesting we're talking about the rig tension on the shrouds is controlling the shape of, of this here. And isn't it also interesting, it's a tiny little sail and we spent the best part of, you know, an hour and a half. So are we with that? So you're sheeting, right? <coughs> As you've got the clip. Yeah. If you look at the line between the corner sorry. of the jib folks, folks, and the cleat sorry. and carry it sorry. up, it should be just below halfway up. Let's do whisk let's bear away onto a reach. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Sorry. Okay. And we'll do the whisker pole on a, on a reach, shall we? Yeah. Sorry. Thank you, Alan. is too low, yeah, it's ruining the top. We do need to investigate having shorter poles, we really do. I mean, Alan, how would you play this? Well, this is, why I'm, this is why I'm asking Tim, you, we're not, we're not very good at it, so that's why I'm coming to <laughs> Tim, tell us what you do. Well, the first thing I think is to get the jib approximately in the right place, and the one I work on is the lower telltale. So I let it out until that begins to fly. Then what happens now is the leech is falling off. So then tighten the leech up until the other ones are lining up as well. That's generally what I do. Well, that makes good sense, doesn't it? Elastic's not set. That's what the problem is on this topic. So, Alan, does that make good sense, doesn't it? Yeah, we normally look what he does and then follow him. <laughs> <laughs> to see what angle is... is I'm not sure I like the follow him. <laughs> <laughs> is that I'm why, on, is that why that. he always beats you? Because <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're no, always no, no, following him. Do you generally always have a curve yeah. along the bottom as well, then? Or well, I think <clears> if you're, you've got to think of it like... Uh, if the sail's too full, then the airflow around it's going to break away from the leech, so it's not going to work very well. And you can tell that by looking, well, the, the top leech will give you some idea anyway. So you don't want it too full. Yeah. So, you know, Let's have you've got to judge it really. So what we're saying is get the bottom telltale to work. I like this. And then get the... Yeah, pull that on. It's going at the top first, so that needs more pole. Doesn't yeah. it? What worries me is when you see on a broadish reach. Let's go onto a broadish reach. Can I go onto a broadish reach? Right. Let the jib right out. I mean that, that that's that leech doesn't look right to me as tight as that. Well, it, okay. So long as the leech can move. Yeah. Yeah. You can. So my, what's interesting, I think, on some of the boats is that the pole itself is fed through, a, through a, a, an eye yeah. onto a yeah. thick yeah. line, which then makes that longer still. Oh yeah, but you don't pull it down as far then. No, no, no. But it, certainly it, put that it, through. The... Where, where this one yeah, works, well, this would... is how I used to have mine before we yeah. kind of changed it back, was that this then shortened your length of your pole for your reach. I, I lead this yeah. through here. Yeah. So that then <laughs> runs that way. Right, we need to put black art. We need to try this. There's an element of it. Yeah. <laughs> the recommendation is to take the pole off. 
Yeah, he's just going to read. Should we just let the pole There's no hurry. No, Shape of the mates. Yeah. 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 If you can see it, that's yeah. the issue. Yes, yeah. but you've got to remember there's a kind of reflexive approach to that. As you change what the jib does, it affects what the main does. So you, you've kind of got to work with the jib going back because that's what's affecting the head base. So get the jib right and you get the main right. And if your main doesn't look right, then you've got to go back and sort the jib out. I would say that looks, I mean, We've seen some pictures in light winds of the leeches far time. I always say they're having a, a diver. Mind you, Barney has his flight out like that, doesn't he? Barney carries his halyard as well. Yeah. Because he's got the yeah, American rules. Yeah. Right. It's, also about this, right it's also about the shaft. It's also about the shaft. It's mashed up like so that is in the central tide. The angle would be more up there, and it would be controlling that edge much better. Yeah. Because the trails have them on a because wire, don't they? Because with it like that, I can control the in and out. So I can't control the up and down on that leaf. No. I think what we'll do is we'll have some reaching this up, and then we'll take some pictures and see if there's anything on the wall. Blue, Blue Jay has it on the wire, yeah. which means that the pole's higher, and it's controlling the down, so it's controlling the tension the whole way down. Yeah, mine's on Yeah, the see, I don't do that. Yeah. Right. right. Move on. Yes. No. Sorry, Mike. Apologies for that. Do you have that little trail up as well? Or not? Oh, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> right. <laughs> the way I would get this here, can you let the little trail up individually? That'd be on. There you go. That's the lowered one. That's that one. Yeah, you want the one. Ian, Ian I want this one tight, you want this one off, so just keep the red one, the red one, yeah. No, they're all to the side. Yeah, no, no, pull yours on, Andy, pull yours on again. There you go. Yeah, 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 I do it, I just don't mind. <laughs> yeah. 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 Away from the away from the main So on a reach, the mass is going forward, not by letting the whole ring off, but by letting the shroud off, the lure shroud. Yes? So do you not adjust the jib tension at all? Sorry. I don't know. No. I should jib tension is. But is, is, is that where that S shape in the middle, where it's moving away from the forestay, comes from? Sorry. So, sorry. It's from the rig. Yeah, that. Do, right, we're talking yeah. just the cloth or the wire. The actual cloth. Okay. Right. Yes. So, so what, uh, when did we lose uh, control? Uh, I would actually tension the jib. Tim, where are you? I'm over here. Would yes. you tension the jib? Yes. 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 It depends on the condition. Uh, yeah. In ways. I find sometimes it's the that it's a good idea to tension the jib because it helps the jib. It helps to be able to see where the jib is right. Yeah. Well, I know, like um, I think that's better. Yeah. I know that with some of them, some folk they they have a very very loose jib luff, so it looks more like a spinnaker luff. The answer, if you have it loose, any power generated by the jib can't be transferred in, trans, can't be transferred easily to the hole because this is moving. So the other thing is that happens as, as that as that love bags out with the gust, the leech tightens because it, it will. You know that's the same principle, isn't it? With uh, 
We'll have to tell Barney he's wrong, but we'll have to do it before the start. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so, come on, we need to... See, is it not been driving the boat through the jib sheets rather than through the, the line? Oh, Sorry. Yeah, this will be, should be pulling it through yeah. the top of the mast as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, generally in lighter winds, I'll have it, I'll have it fairly loose. But if it's too loose, then you make it really difficult. It, it seems to, to me, in introducing this, the bait boat goes faster, but probably less often. In the old days, we used to have two poles, a short one and a long one. And then yeah. loose them over the and side. You could, and you could throw them overboard. Right? <laughs> yeah. And you could do that, because the only thing you have to recover is your crew. <laughs> <laughs> well, unless it's been really naughty. <laughs> <laughs> well, you mean that away from it. Right, shall we do the main salt? Because otherwise, we're going to be here till we You will be without new main shot. Yeah, but it's flatter, so that's not quite so good. is meant to be parallel to the mast. And can you see, I hope, that it's angled back a little bit? Yeah. So if I tension it, just use the foot slightly more. If I do that, and now do that. Yes. So you have to spend a bit of time making sure that that's parallel. Otherwise, you're wasting that little bit of sail area. Now the mainsail, Has a vital role in the because it's the windward part of the slot between the jib and the main. And the slot, as we we're already discussing, is the powerhouse. Getting it right will get the boat through the water.
to do. from the centre line, please. We let it away from the centre line. If we let it away from the centre line, what's it going to the slot? Closing the slot off, isn't it? So as the boom goes away from the centre line, we're going to have to flatten the front of the... Some people say they try not uh, stop backwinding by altering the jib sheet. What you can't do is mess about with this because it ruins this. We've, we've spent time getting this right, so now we've got to get this right to fit this, haven't we? Yeah. So I'm going to bear away. Okay. We've got controls to make us control the front of the sail. We've either got this or we've got the kicking strap. Bring the boom into the centre line, please. And let the kicker go. Right. Now that looks pretty good. Would you say it looks pretty good? Now look what happens to the leech. And therefore look what happens to the lug when we ease. Kick it from right off, is it? Yeah. Where did it backwind? See it? At the top. Yeah. What we're trying to do is control the tension on the back bottom corner of these two guys. Put the boom back into the centre line. Put the boom into the centre line. The kicker should be just at a, at a sort of a default setting. You know, in those easterly, south-easterly you get with it. in front of it, therefore it's got to be sheeted like a jib because of the diagrams we saw you know, in, in the pub just a minute ago. Below that we've got the advantage of air pouring through the slot. So all we need to do, all we ever need to do, all we ever need to look at is at the front of the mainsail in that GVR pattern. And the rule is, is it back we need? Yes, we need more downward leg. Is it not backwinding? Then you need less. And remember that rule? It's on, it's on the... It's best when it's just on the point of backwinding. As it happens, repeatedly... Right, stop. That's perfect. 
<laughs> How would you describe that? That leech looks pretty good, doesn't it, actually? Yeah. Yeah. Just ease it an inch, please. No, an inch. It's that ratio again, folks. Every unit, this goes up and down. The top of the cell, the top button, the GBR panel, will move five times that amount. So when the boom's into the centre line, the, the centre line will keep on saying, oh, am I hooking the upper leech? Is it, you know, am I stalling the cell out? All I would do is, and Ian's going to do it for us, ease the cell away, please. Yeah, until it back wins, just a shame. Yeah. Constantly on the move. Tiny movements with the boom in and out. Yeah. Now, let's let the boom go away from the centre line and let's put some welly on the kick. Go on. Right, who's got the tension meter? What was it before? 21. 21. Well, hasn't gone down much. Why should the retention go down as we put the kick around? What's it doing to the mass? It's bending and shortening it. Perfect. It's bending the mass. Because it's bending the mass, it's lowering the hounds down, isn't it? Because it's lowering the hounds down, look here, folks. This is going to start to sag, isn't it? I've worked out that on an M7, which is what I'm, I'm using, the mass, if it bends more than 10 to 15 millimetres at deck level, the top will be, you know, a tiny amount, the top will be, uh, you know, it, I'll just lose all retention. So I'm really only bending the, the mast here, tiny little amounts. Yep, and remember the rule. Am I having to ease a lot, then straighten the mass? Am I having to let go a lot, then bend the mass? Why does bending the mass flatten the sail? What it does, sheet it in please. Um, right, can we straighten it? Let's kick it. Now look what happens to the, to the, curve the air is being bent round so the boat doesn't heel over. And remember that rule, as the gust comes, they're beautifully defined today, ease before the gust comes. And then it's just a matter of straightening the arm. You don't, if you leave it too late, there's truckloads of string has to go out and then truckloads, and unfortunately, a lot to, has to come back in. It's too hard work, we don't want that. Yeah, we're helmsmen for goodness sake. Right. Are you talking about there? Where does the ram come into this? Right. That's, that's my point. 
if you allow the mass to bend too much, more than 15 with the ram, right. you will have so much bend that you lower the hounds, yeah. lose rig tension. Because you lose rig tension, the jib becomes fuller. Because the jib becomes fuller, you can't point. Right. So in all these scenarios, the ram's already on, is it? I hope it's... It, Oh, sorry. Where the shroud was. Right. I mean, that looks good now. Just pull the cutting arm on, just. Pull the cutting arm work now. Right, you can quickly take a photograph of that. Could you? <laughs> Show your grandma. That's all you have to do. Right. But look what happens. What we're going to do is leave the cutting room where it is. Leave the cutting room where it is. Look what happens in the flow. doing that but he's putting a right angle ridge right at the front of the that's really over here. No. <laughs> <laughs> right, look at that. Don't leave that too long. Quick, can you see the horror of that? Quick get it. Yeah, off it comes. The Cunningham, if you get it wrong, is a passport to the back of the fleet. On the Albacore, I think, and I know I failed on the heavy side, mostly at the backs of my friends. We're using the Cunningham to tidy the sail up. <coughs> Mass bend to get the backwinding in the right place. Yeah. And then if there are wrinkles, then I tidy it up with, with the, just with the Cunningham. If the kicker goes off and I've got Cunningham off on that Cunningham has to go off. It's a killer by dragging the float forwards. Do you remember that picture of Neville? He hadn't bothered, had he, to, to tidy up his sail. Very ugly, but he was a leg and a half in front of us. <laughs> we haven't done the foot, have we? One more question. Can you talk about putting on the kicker? We reduce the rig tension. Yes. Would you ever tension up the rig? Oh, again? absolutely. Sorry, yes. Yeah. Thank you. If that lured shroud ever goes slack, you will not point as well as you should be. So if you bend the mast more, lower that distance, then the, the way we've I've decided to do it over the years is we've got the three positions here. Boom in the air when the crew is too heavy. Boom horizontal when the crew is just right. Boom dripping, drooping when the crew is too light. So in windy weather, the boom is four inches below the right angle. It's at right angles in medium conditions and up in the air. Medium conditions, it's a terrible expression because the crew weights vary. The light weight the lucky old lightweight will be doing having to spill earlier than me. I will have to be hanging on to the crew down to Leward later than the lucky old lightweight. Yeah. So you can't say force two do this, force three do this. It's, it's, it's where is the crew? This is where the boom end should be. Yeah. Right. What haven't we done? We haven't done the outro. Right. The main 
Italian stretch to it, isn't it? Yeah. Is that the, how That's much deep. of a problem you, is that? You're, you're not going to ask me my opinion of rope halyards, are you? <laughs> I have to have a wire halyard. I just have to have a wire halyard. Because then you know where it is. It's on its hedgehog at the bottom. You've got a rope, haven't you? God, you must be good. <laughs> but there are times when I go out and then I have to go, go head to end just to tighten the halyard up again. The, the halyards, the, the rope they supply you with, I think, is it four or five mil? I would use six mil to, to, so there's no stretch at all. Right, where were we to? Right, clue out all of in light winds, in light winds, how would you describe the back edge of that sail at the bottom back? Is it aiming dead, dead, dead aft or not? It's hooked to windward. So in light winds, why should the air? Why should the slow tide tide up right wind move to wind? It's going to break off here. Then you're going to end up reefing the sail in light wind. In light wind, bar tight, please, Andy. If the clue pulls out, I'll put another one in. <laughs> bar tight. So that the leech is as straight as possible to allow the slow, tired moving air to cling to the sail for as long as possible. In a breeze, the f in a breeze, <laughs> really tight. Why? Because where will the boom end be in a breeze? It will be out. Because the boom is out, let it go. If it's full here, you're going to be closing the slot off. In middle conditions, when the crew and you are sitting on the side, yep. You could ease the foot just a little bit when we're beating. Only so far as it's back the mainsail back wind. If the mainsail starts to back wind, then you run too far. And then on a reach, right, on a reach, I like to have it in quite a long way. Why? Because by having the bottom over full, having it too full, you're sending fullness all the way up the sail. So therefore you need less kicking strap. Because you need less kicking strap, you, the mast will be straighter. Because the mast is straighter, the sail will be fuller. The kicking strap with the boom right out, like it is now, is it going to... Be, let's, yeah. let's do a bit it's the, is the kicking strap going to bend the mast more there than there? Bending it side to side, not yep. front to back. Because of the pear-shaped section, the, the kicking strap will always have a greater effect when the boom is further out. Because what's happening with the what does the kicker do? What the kicker actually does is by its very angle here, it not only downward loads, we've seen it pull, impose a downward mm. load, but it also has a forward load, a forward component and it's that forward component that causes the mass to bend. Yep. So with the boom further out, I use exactly the same rule. Boom is probably further in the air as well, you know, and, and so on. I would use exactly the same rule. Is it backwinding in the top GBR panel? Yes, more download. Is it not backwinding in the GBR panel? Less downward load. Yes? Let's go away and put it in line. We might need people to grab it just in case. How much tension? A little bit of a gust. No, let that go. How much pull out for on it? This is why boats that aren't lucky, like the Albacore, are in trouble on a run. Look where the boom end is. Can you see, I hope, that the, the, you know, the air has got to be 
the air has got to be diagonally forward. Now let the load charge down. Is that it? That's, that's it. it. That's, that's it. it. That's 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 it. That
No, what he did is he jumped out. Oh, and then punched a hole in the bottom. Well, he didn't punch a hole in the bottom. It didn't on Jeremy, did he? Out on, out on my one, which was um, the 8001 down in line. Right. So the guy I bought it from had done that. And, it's and why is it more likely to do that, Stuart, in... Because of waves. Because yeah. there's, there's bugger all tension here. And, it, and you've got, you know, the, the, the mast is coming out of the ink pot at the bottom. So if you're going to go forwards, four millimeter hole uh, bolt, and a yeah. you know a six millimeter hole. Okay. You Good. have a four stair adjustment on this. Do you ever do anything with that, or just leave it? I, I, on my boat, it's here, so yeah. I just tension it. Yeah. And what that does is it then flip, lets the shrouds go, and I do that, and it goes forward automatically. But that obviously would then stop the mask popping out as well, wouldn't it? Uh, and then I slept, yes, yeah. yes, it would do, yeah. 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 Right. I think we've got, yep. Time for warm-up. Yeah. Yeah.